the dunes and some of that damage coming up in about 30 minutes and your full first alert forecast in 15 minutes. More on what you can expect tomorrow right on through your weekend and where Dorian is right now. In the meantime, Bridget Matter just down the coast right here from me in St. John's County in St. Augustine. Bridget? And Mike, we're seeing some of those cliffs still here on the beach. We'll give you a little bit of a tour, which we've been doing uh, throughout the hurricane. You can see that there are people down the beach. They're using some of these cliffs to lay on. And like in Jacksonville Beach, we're having a really good surfing day. If we pan over this way, surfers have been here all day enjoying these waves. 24 hours after the outer bands of Hurricane Dorian swept our coastline, the beaches were packed. Taking pictures. That's it. Whoa. <laughs> that was an incredible little stunt he just did. Dozens of surfers were out in St. Augustine Beach enjoying the surf. While it's a beautiful day today, Dorian did leave some destruction along the coast. The Army Corps of Engineers says the thousands of cubic yards of sand added in 2018 did its job, but they'll need to assess if another renourishment project needs to be done. We showed you as waters rushed in, eating away at the beach, leaving behind erosion. Our initial indication is from some folks that saw some of your footage, etc., is that the beach held up very well. Jason Hera, a project manager with the Army Corps of Engineers, says these cliffs we saw during the storm will eventually even out with the rest of the beach. And we've zoomed into the pier here in St. Augustine. It's closed until further notice. They're going to assess it to see if there was any damage. Now, tomorrow, the assessment will begin by the Army Corps of Engineers of the beach to see if they will have to do any additional renourishment. For now, we're live in St. Augustine Beach. Bridget Matters, CBS 47 Action News, Jax. All right, Dorian's impact was mostly felt by Volano Beach there, an area that doesn't have much of a buffer between the ocean and homes. It's been eaten away over the years, the last five years. Yesterday, we showed you the waves washing ashore over A1A. Action News Jack's Lorena Inclan is live from Volano Beach today. She was there yesterday. And Lorena, today, the county commissioner who represents that area surveyed the damage. John, he did. He surveyed this area by land and also by plane, taking photos of this area right here next to me, that which is not far away from the villages of Volano. Now, thankfully, as we've been mentioning, Dorian wasn't as bad as Matthew and Irma, but what it did do was that it revealed this weakness along the Volano coast. Much of the beach was eaten away by the ferocious waves caused by Dorian. Now, many of the homes' back porches meet the sea instead of the beach. Commissioner Jeremiah Blocker represents the property owners who live here. We're very blessed. We really dodged a bullet. He was up in the air today taking a look at the damage from above. So far, it looks like the damage is contained to, to one or two minor areas. This is one of those areas. We showed you how storm surge rushed onto A1A Wednesday afternoon. One major factor that likely contributed to the breach is this. This is a Google image of the home that used to stand here, but now it's a gaping hole, meaning easy access for seawater to make its way inland. Blocker says commissioners recently approved a project by the Army Corps of Engineers for dune restoration and beach renourishment. You know, what we want to do is we want to have a robust, ongoing beach renourishment program. Many homeowners are relieved Dorian did not leave a major mark, but its passage is a sobering reminder that hurricane season is far from over. Now, here's another reminder and another example of the erosion left behind, and you can even see some exposed pipe here in Villano Beach. Now, according to the commissioner we spoke to, he says that they've also hired a coastal engineer to be full-time on staff to take a look at this kind of thing. Coming up next at 6, we will show you some more air images, aerial images from our Sky Action News Jacks. Reporting live from Villano Beach, Lorena Inclan, CBS 47 Action News Jacks. Small margin of error there in Villano Beach. Many of you across the area got sandbags to protect your homes from flood water, and you may be wondering what to do with them now that the storm has passed. If they got wet, you want to get rid of them. Flood water can contain bacteria, even chemicals, which could get into your home if you keep them around. It's also recommended you don't use the sand for other things. Instead, contact your local landfill or emergency management for areas where you can get rid of them. Some homeowners in Davis Shores are cleaning up the mess left by floodwaters inside of their homes. And for hours, Action News Jack showed you the flooded streets. Team coverage picks up now with Action News Jack's Elizabeth Pace live in the First Alert Storm Tracker. And Elizabeth, this is where you found four feet of water during high tide. 
The water was up to my hips at one point. It was some of the worst flooding I saw all day yesterday. But now I'm going to switch over to the hood camera on the first alert storm tracker. And this is what Davis Shores look like right now. Off to my right in those yards, that's a huge pile of debris. We're seeing that all throughout this neighborhood. It is mostly cleared up over here in Davis Shores, but still some work to do for these homeowners. At the peak of the storms, you couldn't see the streets in Davis Shores. We were feet deep in the water along Coquina Avenue. This house had water pushing through the garage. We checked in on them today. They didn't want to be on camera, but told us they evacuated during the storms. You can see the water line inside their house. It's about 16 inches high. The flooding wasn't nearly as bad for other neighbors. Water uh, breached, but it was a slow trickle, so we got a couple inches compared to the couple feet that were outside of the house. Davis Shores is one of the lowest points in St. Augustine, meaning flooding is a concern with major storms. Rick Hernandez is thankful the water only reached his driveway Wednesday. Probably to the back tire of the Nissan, which wasn't, none of these vehicles were there. <laughs> We've lost five vehicles in the last two storms, so that's not going to happen again. After suffering damage from Hurricane Irma and Matthew, Hernandez found new ways to protect his home, including this wall around openings of his house. It's um, three quarter inch plywood over wood studs, four foot high, siliconed all in well. Um, I did that to the two openings on the side of my house to go underneath it, and it held the water out. Now, we talked to some Florida homeowners who went to the extreme when protecting their property. We'll, so, we'll show you some more unique ways to protect, protect your home ahead at 555. Reporting live in Davis Shores, Elizabeth Pace, CBS 47, Action News Jax. In St. John's County, there is a special hotline for home and business owners with damaged property. And if you have any storm related questions or concerns, you can call the St. John's County Building Services Structural Hotline at the number on your screen, 904 827 6836. All right, let's give you a live look right now at the now iconic American flag that's whipping in Dorian's wind off the coast of North Carolina by about 30 miles. This was made famous in Florence last year. Listen for just a second at this wind. It's, it's remarkable. And new at five, Dave Faraday with our sister station WSOC in Charlotte describes the impact being felt now near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Well, I think the big concern going into the afternoon hours are these winds are really going to pick up here in the Myrtle Beach area. And we have seen the winds increasing this morning. The bigger concern for the folks who stayed behind so far have been the tornadoes that have spun up here along the Grand Strand this morning as the outer bands of Hurricane Dorian worked their way on shore. We went uh, just about five, six miles north of here and we saw a lot of damage to an apartment complex after a small tornado touched down there. We actually had some cell phone video earlier where you could actually see the tornado as it raced across North Myrtle Beach, moving at about 35, 40 miles per hour. There was damage to cars, damage to some of those apartment buildings. Fortunately, no one was hurt over there. One man described hearing uh, pieces of wood hit the front of his apartment complex. He told me that no one was hurt, but that one of the buildings did have to be evacuated. Again, the storm is moving to the north here along the Carolina coast. The other big concern going into the afternoon hours is storm surge here. I'm told that we could see a storm surge of five to eight feet. They are expecting high tide early this afternoon. So we're going to be checking out some of the streets just to the north of here, Ocean Boulevard, to see if there's any overwash there. Back to you. Tonight, the islands of the Bahamas are in desperate need of help as they start to clean up what's left after the storm. Action News Jack's Paige Kelton joins us in the studio. And Paige, you found new video showing the devastation. That's right, and video also showing you just how terrifying it must have been for people who waited 36 hours for that storm to pass. I want to start with this video. It looks like it's just another example of how high the floodwaters went in Grand Bahama. We've edited this in. Look at this. This is just one person. The boater came close and saw arms and legs sticking out. There were dozens of people hiding inside this attic, waiting to escape. It's not the first time, too, that we saw people seeking refuge in their attics, hoping that it was going to be high enough to escape the water. Can you imagine that? This is drone video taken after the storm. The Red Cross saying nearly half the homes on Abaco and Grand Bahamas Islands were damaged or destroyed. Look at that. Cars, power lines, huge piles of debris litter the landscape. This is Marsh Harbor. 
Bahamian authorities announced 20 deaths. More casualties are expected in the coming days as they d dig through the rubble of towns in northwestern Bahamas. Survivors say desperation is now setting in. The looting has begun and these people are armed. They're going after homes that are still intact. That of course have generators maybe, food. Um, you know, it's, it's bad. The humanitarian crisis is now emerging. People still need the basics, food and water, and any seat out of town that they can find. In the studio, Paige Kelton, CBS 47 Action News, Jax. Not a very bad day. In fact, downright beautiful at the beaches right now. I'm Action News Jax, Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish at Jacksonville Beach. We're going to take a little walk here up to the dune line in the full first alert forecast and show how we did there during and after Dorian. Your first alert forecast after the break. Coming up, two stories you still haven't seen on Action News Jax. First, stories of survival in the Bahamas. A local family on pins and needles as they waited for news from loved ones. I know what a cat at 45 is like, so it was a little fearful. It was that was scared for them. Then Hurricane Dorian left a local couple homeless. This it was our everything. It was our home. Our, it has all of our belongings. Every it's, it's our whole life right here. Now the Marine that is coming to the rescue. More local stories straight ahead. Next on Action News, Jax. Well, a local couple is homeless tonight after their sailboat partially sank there in Hurricane Dorian. Action News Jack Sky Vision flew over the boat this morning under the Intracoastal Bridge on Beach Boulevard. You can see it there, the red one. Action News Jack's Alicia Tarancon caught up with the owner today who tells her that he isn't sure what they're going to do next. Isaac Allen and his girlfriend Madison spent Thursday morning pulling out clothes, a scooter, a generator, and anything else they could from inside their little red sailboat. It's where they've lived the last six months. It was our everything. It was our home. Our, it has all of our belongings. Every, it's, it's our whole life right here. When Hurricane Dorian hit, they took shelter in a hotel with family. Their boat was knocked loose twice during the storm and had to be retied down. When we got here this morning, we found the boat partially submerged. We redid everything in the boat. New floors, new TVs, new countertops. 
And Madison tells us it wasn't just her and her boyfriend whose sailboat got stuck out here. If you look over here, you'll notice that's her brother's white sailboat up against those rocks. It needs you know, to be pumped out. If they can pump it out and then and use that lift bag, it'll lift it. Should lift it right up. The couple tells us they don't have insurance and they're not sure what to do next. We don't even know uh, where the holes are, how many holes there are, what's going to happen, how we're going to get it out of the water. We, we just got to play it by ear, see who can help us with what. Reporting near the Intercoastal Bridge on Beach Boulevard, Alicia Tarancon, CBS 47, Action News Jax. And hopefully they'll be able to get back on their feet. Tonight, several families are without a home, and one person is dead after a house fire in San Jose. This is video from JFRD of the Kensington Square condos. Fire said, crews say that the fire destroyed half of the unit where it started. The displaced families are being helped by the Red Cross. Right now, a child and three others are recovering from an overnight shooting. It happened near the corner of 62nd and Vermilion Street. That's in the North Shore neighborhood. Anyone with information about this is asked to call the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax, your official Jaguar stations, and we are getting you ready for the first game of the season against the Chiefs on Countdown to Kickoff. That's Sunday at 11:30 on CBS 47, followed by the game at one. Then we'll have post-game coverage on the Action News Jax app and Facebook Live. Now certified Jacksonville's most accurate weather forecast, Action News Jax first alert weather. From Jacksonville Beach, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris. What better way to forecast the weather than to be out in it? I always say, check it before you say it. And that would be certainly what we're doing this afternoon. Sort of a recon mission, if you will, of the beaches after yesterday's brush with Dorian. And I'll tell you what, it's much better than what we saw three years ago. Now, the ocean right now, it's not at high tide, but it's about uh, approximately 50 yards out that way toward the east. My left, or my photographer's right, Steve's right, here is where the ocean was yesterday. Okay, when we got to high tide, and we showed you this a number of times with our Jack's Beach First Alert Sky Cam, and it, you can see the dunes. It got up here very close to the dunes, and in places, it actually made it to the dunes, what we call wave run up. But it did not, at least in this area, breach the dunes. It didn't go over the top, and it didn't breach the dunes. And that's good news because that happened all over the place here. In fact, Steve, if you can just pan over real quick, are the piles of sand that they, uh, Jack Speech lifeguards, had put up here uh, right in front of the area where you walk down from the uh, circular, circular drive next to the life saving uh, building there, the lifeguard building? They had built up that sand there so the water wouldn't shoot through the dune there where it's open. So they've opened that back up now. But you can see here where the water lapped right up into the dunes. So it got there, but it didn't top the dunes. It didn't breach the dunes. And then last but not least, remember, we always stay off the dunes no matter what as we're trying to continue the restoration process from the damage of the last few years, particularly Matthew and 16 and Irma the next year. All right, let's get to five sweet. First of all, Doppler HD. And we're looking at Dorian now, well off to the northeast of Jacksonville by a couple of 150 miles, about 250 miles away. Still swirling away and really battering the Carolinas. A landfall near the South North Carolina border is imminent. Right now, it is breezy, and I can attest to that here at Jack's Beach, but it's an offshore wind. We Winds are out of the west, generally at about 10 to 20 miles per hour on the underside of a hurricane. It's typically hot and a little bit breezy, and that's what we've got today. Wind gusts still at times are up to around 30 miles per hour, especially at the beaches. So we'll start out tomorrow morning with another beautiful day. Quite honestly, skies will be mostly clear. Dorian's well to the north. Temperatures relatively mild. A few inland spots may even touch the upper 60s, but it will be a hot day overall by noon. Temperatures are pushing the 90 degree mark, if not above 90, and then into the 90s in the afternoon, but we stay dry. And then as we get into uh, early uh, Saturday morning. We're talking another comfortable morning with temperatures that are going to be in the 60s in inland spots, at least 70s at the beaches, and then Saturday afternoon, it's hot. We'll soar into the 90s, but it's again mainly dry. So check out your boating forecast. Things have calmed down nicely, so you can, if you're a recreational boater or business, or whatever the case may be, it's, it's safe to get back out there, certainly tomorrow and right on through the weekend. Uh, beach forecast is one where we continue to see the rip current risk go down, the surf is going down. We're in pretty good shape in that. That regard, so that's some good news. And finally, your hour by hour forecast for tomorrow shows those temperatures starting out comfortable, relatively so, but then a hot afternoon. Plenty of sun and into the 90s. And your first alert seven day forecast shows the sunshine right through the weekend, but also the hot temperatures will be in the 90s, little if any rainfall. And then there's a shot at at least some af isolated afternoon.
afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms as we get into early and middle part of next week. Temperatures stay pretty hot, 90 to 95 degrees. So a pretty afternoon at Jack's Beach right now. We're still a couple of hours away from sunset. There are quite a few people out here because many of the students, of course, have another day without school. That ends finally tomorrow. When we get come back at about 5.30, we're going to examine the dunes and compare uh, how far the water came up yesterday versus today. And at 5.45, a check of the tropics. What else may be out there or brewing? The first alert forecast. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish from Jack's Beach. New on Action News Jack's at 530. Local neighbors went to some extreme measures for hurricane protection. The preps they say they'll use for more storms. Plus, paradise wiped away at 5. Action News Jack showed you the destruction that now needs to be cleaned up in the Bahamas. New coming up at 530. Stories of survival in the Bahamas. A local family on pins and needles as they waited for news from loved ones. Now, hear the extraordinary way they protected their children as floodwaters rushed in. Coming up on CBS 47 Action News Jacks. Local coverage you can count on. Right now, search and rescue is the focus in the Bahamas after the storm. Action News Jack's Phil Amato shows us the devastation left behind by Hurricane Dorian. Now that Dorian has moved on, we're getting a look at the damage caused by this historic storm. Take a look at these pictures here. These are before and after satellite images of the small town of Marsh Harbor on the Abaco Islands. The picture on your left was taken in May. And if you look carefully, you'll see some white boats there in the water. The picture on the right was taken yesterday. You'll notice most of those same boats are gone. This short video can give you a better idea of the dramatic changes made to that area. Dorian stayed over that area for about a full day before moving north. There are plenty of ways to help, and you can find information on ActionNewsJax.com. Later on at 6, how you can spot fake charities and to avoid getting ripped off. In the studio, Phil Amato, CBS 47, Action News Jax. New at 5.30, prayers answered in the Bahamas for a local family. 
somebody sent us another voice text screaming, say, we found her, we found her, we have her. I just started crying. I literally started crying tears of joy. How a mother and her two children managed to survive major flooding for more than a day. And businesses taking advantage of you during a storm. What to do if you think you were a victim of price gouging during Hurricane Dorian. Plus, plastic wrap, a water dam, and a battle wagon. The unique storm preps local homeowners say they'll use for future storms. Our team coverage after the storm continues with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. He joins us live at Jacksonville Beach checking on conditions after the storm. Mike. You know, when we fared pretty well here at the beaches, it was a beating yesterday at the beaches as far as uh, waves and uh, the wave action is concerned and run up during the high tide, but we did pretty well, especially compared to past storms. Right here, I'm at the dune lines, which are all compromised from previous storms. They're not near as tall as the old days, so to speak. But right, right about here is where the water got up to, and, and the, it, has, it has brought down the dunes somewhat. There's a lot of sand that's been deposited here. You can see the sea oats about right here. Remember, you never stand, you never stand on the dunes. We respect those dunes uh, really a lot. And I'm going to take us straight on down and walk this off. Here's how far the water came up yesterday. So we're walking Walking down, and by the way, we have a video from when Ben Becker was down here at Jack's Beach in the pier from yesterday. Take a look at how it looked, and by the time I get down here, you'll be able to see a comparison of just how different and how, how big a difference 24 hours makes. So I'm walking straight down to the water. We've got Ben yet live shot yesterday. Tremendous breaking waves at and near the pier. Sometimes they were up to 20 feet pounding our shoreline with uh, just incessant wave after wave. It did cause some generally superficial damage to the Jacksonville Pier. Nothing much more considerable than has already been done. And quite honestly, it would have just started the demolition process a little earlier. I don't think the city would have cared that much. But I finally made it to the water here, you guys. And it was 75 yards from here, where we started at the dunes, all the way down to what is low tide, admittedly. But there is a lot, was a lot more water here yesterday than there is today. So while the, the um, 
overall, conditions here at the beach are really in pretty good shape. We haven't seen as much erosion as past storms. That's not necessarily true when you go down the coast to St. Augustine. Check out Sky Action News Jacks, our helicopter right over the dunes of St. Augustine Beach right now, and you can see there's more erosion that has occurred there than what has occurred at this particular location of Jacks Beach. Now, there are spots where there's some pretty decent uh, cliff-like uh, leftovers, if you will, after the pounding of yesterday. But where I am standing right here, it's nothing like it was, say, about three years ago. However, having said that, as beautiful as the water is, it's still a red flag day. There are rip currents occurring yet today, so you have to use some extra care, but conditions will continue to improve over the next few days and the next full first alert forecast. In about 15 minutes, I'll show you what's brewing out there in the tropics now in your ever important first alert weekend forecast that includes your JAGS kickoff. From Jacksonville Beach, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Minutes ago, Action News Jack's Filamato showed you satellite images of the destruction in the Bahamas left by Hurricane Dorian. This is new video of Man O'War Key in the Abacos. Boats now out of the water, littered everywhere. D buildings there destroyed as well. And I mean, the damage is seemingly endless. Uh, among that destruction, people who still have not been found days after landfall, and it may be several days before they are found. Yeah, and here in Jacksonville, at least one local family nearly lost their loved one in the storm. Action News Jack's Danny Bozzini joins us live in the studio. Danny, you spoke to members of that family today. Yes, as the water started rising inside their home in Freeport, the family became so desperate they actually placed their two young kids inside their kitchen cabinets. If you take a closer look, you can see those young kids right here. It was the highest ground their mother could find. If she doesn't get out the house, she's not going to make it. That's what was racing through Debbie Trimble's mind last week while her relatives in Freeport were facing Hurricane Dorian's fury. Her cousin sent a voice text to everyone. You could hear the emotion in her about to cry. She says Amber sent us pictures showing that the water was up to her chest and because her children couldn't stand in it, she put the children in the cabinets to protect them, put them on higher ground. Moments after that text, all communication was lost and that's when the fear set in. You wanted to cry, but you wanted to be hopeful. You wanted to um, hold on to that hope and hold on to your faith and prayer that God was going to see him through. These are pictures Trimble got from her cousin showing just how high the water had gotten inside their home. You can see the refrigerator floating inside. Days went by with no updates. Then finally on Tuesday, her prayers were answered. Somebody sent us another voice text screaming, saying, we found her, we found her, we have her. I just started crying. I literally started crying tears of joy. She tells me Amber and her two kids survived by holding on to a nearby tree. They were actually hanging on a tree for a day and a half. These are... These are photos Tribble was sent that show the destruction her family is facing in Treeport. Tribble tells me, unfortunately, this is only one of many homes that look like this. Live in studio, Danny Bozzini, CBS 47, Action News Jacks. Incredible story of survival. We just keep hearing them, and I hope that more families get that good news and they're reunited with their loved ones. Sky Action News Jacks flew the coast before the storm just to get an idea of what the beaches looked like here before the weather moved in. Newly renourished dunes designed to prevent flooding were put in after past storms. And with the storm gone, it's up to the city to check what needs to be done to get the shore protected before another storm. Action News Jacks' Megan Moriarty explains. Hurricane Dorian came and went taking some of Duval County's beaches with it. I feel that there's been a good amount of erosion. Chris Howard spends a good amount of his time at Jacksonville Beach and says he's noticed an impact. I'm out here consistently uh, walking it and four or five days a week and it's been, I guess, a consistent uh, decrease of sand out here. A formal evaluation will take place tomorrow. U.S. Army Corps and officials with the city of Jacksonville will assess Jacksonville, Neptune, and Atlantic Beach. They'll check for damage and see how much actually washed out to sea before making a final decision on emergency renourishment. There could always be more sand. I mean, just saves our beaches. And that was Megan Moriarty reporting. The sand is replenished there every five years. And the project manager for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says that he believes the beach did its job in protecting the dunes and not much should have to be done.
Over the past few hurricane seasons, the St. Augustine Bayfront has been one of the hardest hit areas by flooding. Now, take a look at this video from Hurricane Matthew outside the Castillo de San Marcos. Nearly the entire area was underwater. Several businesses were damaged. But yesterday, there was much less water, and businesses were better prepared than in previous years. Action News Jack's Beth Rousseau shows us the lessons learned from those other storms. I spent Wednesday here on the bayfront, and we did see some street flooding, but nothing compared to the waters during Hurricane Matthew. Shop owners here tell me that is when they learned about preparing for a hurricane. Boards are coming down, sandbags are being removed, and stores all over downtown St. Augustine are open for business. I was expecting at least three feet of water. Phoebe Taylor, manager of Ancient City Brewing, says prepping with Gorilla Glue, plywood, and spray foam took hours earlier this week. I hope we have it down. It seems to be working, so yeah, I, I think we're doing good. The first alert storm tracker captured the small amount of flooding that happened during Dorian at high tide. Taylor tells me their building is untouched, but the brewery's bottom line has taken a hit as families canceled trips. Definitely hurt us for a holiday weekend um, because this didn't, I mean, this started last week. She says being open for business so soon after a storm is what's most important. It's a lot more work to clean up than to put up. This hurricane gear is coming down, but businesses say they're not putting it away because they know we are in the peak of hurricane season, so they'll be ready to put it back out when another storm approaches. Reporting in St. Augustine, Beth Russo, Action News Jacks. And tonight at 6, Jacksonville locals head to the Bahamas. A new video gives us an idea of how much help this country needs. And we have several ways that you can help coming up. Plus, plastic wrap and the battle wagon. The most unique storm preps in our area. Which ones work better than others?
Our local shoreline made it through the storm, but another part of our ecosystem didn't fare as well. Sea turtles. Action News Jack's Courtney Cole spoke to Beaches Sea Patrol to find out how many of the nests survived. There are just under two months left of turtle nesting season here in Florida. And now that Hurricane Dorian has left our area, a nonprofit is here to see how many nests survived the coastal storm. This is the first chance we've gotten out in about four days. Kevin Brown with the Beaches Sea Turtle Patrol told me they keep a GPS on each nest and a chart to keep up with exactly where they are. Beaches Sea Turtle Patrol told me they started off with about 116 sea turtle nests this year, and there were about 40 left incubating before Dorian. Now, after Dorian, there were about 10 nests left that are marked, and 30 still remain, so they're trying to locate them, but they tell me they believe most of those are washed out. Brown told me this happened in previous years, too. With Matthew and Irma. So, um, and this is a nature thing. Um, whether we mark them or not, um, this is probably going on all up and down the East Coast. Brown told me since the water didn't make it all the way up to the dunes, the turtles that survived were either inside or closest to them. Let's hope we don't get another one anytime soon. Reporting in Neptune Beach, Courtney Cole, CBS 47, Action News Jax. I'll tell you, our beaches did fare pretty well. I'm Action News Jax, Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Kind of in a tunnel of sand. I'll explain this in your Jags kickoff forecast in minutes. All right, coming up at 6, a child is one of four people hurt in an overnight shooting. Action News Jax returns to the scene and spoke with neighbors who heard gunfire from just feet away.
An Action News Jax investigation uncovers more than 100 complaints of price gouging filed against local businesses. Action News Jax, Paige Kelton joins us in the newsroom. And Paige, you've been in touch with the Attorney General's office, and they tell you that most of them involve gas and water. That's right. 80% of complaints involve those two things gas and fuel, or fuel and water, I should say. Across Florida, there were 2,900 reports of price gouging. That's when businesses bump up prices to beef up their bottom line, and it is illegal. Here in Jacksonville, I can tell you there were 85 formal price gouging complaints filed with Florida's Attorney General. There were 11 in St. Johns County, 12 in Clay, and 19 reports in Nassau County. Just over the last week, 180 stores statewide were visited by the AG's rapid response team. I'm working with the Attorney General's office here in Florida to get copies of those local complaints to see which businesses were named and what for. In the meantime, if you want to report price gouging locally, call 8669-NO-SCAM. You'll find it right there on the screen. In the newsroom, Paige Kelton, CBS 47, Action News, Jax. Publix is donating $250,000 to Hurricane Dorian relief efforts in the Bahamas. Action News, Jax told you when the storm devastated Grand Bahama Island and its surrounding islands there. Publix also collecting donations for the American Red Cross at all of its registers. Join Action News, Jax, and our news partner, 104. Point five WOKV for our Convoy of Care. The event will help those affected by Dorian in the Bahamas. We will be at the town center uh, next Tuesday. That's Tuesday from 7 until 2. Come and join us and meet some of the Action News Jack's team as well. Jaguars fans, all access is back tonight. Join Brent Martineau, Calais Campbell, and former Jag Jeff Lagerman at the Mellow Mushroom in Avondale for tonight's show. They're going to talk about the upcoming game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And former Jaguar Rashawn Mathis will be tonight's special guest. So if you can't make it, be sure to tune in on Fox 30 at 7. Now, certified Jacksonville's most accurate weather forecast. Action News Jack's first alert weather. From Jacksonville Beach, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist Mike Burr. Sort of inspecting the beaches the day after Dorian made its brush by. A little more on that in just a minute, but let's get right to your first alert forecast. Tell you what, it's a pretty afternoon and evening out here in the beaches. As we look at first alert Doppler HD, it is dry area wide. Good news, looks a lot different than it did at this time yesterday, and it will stay dry right on through this evening. Uh, check out your uh, temperatures over the next five days. It's really a big story. The heat. The temperatures are soaring. Now, out here at Jack's Beach, even though it's hot, we've got a beautiful sea breeze, and it's really quite pretty. But you go inland, uh, the next several days, uh, our cookers will be well into the 90s, in the mid-90s, more or less, for uh, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, into the early part of next week. And on top of that, mainly dry, too, as I'll show you in the first or third seven-day forecast in a minute. But we'll be a solid six to eight degrees above average all the way through the weekend. Speaking of which, oh, it is NFL football time, folks. The Jags kick off at home. Home opener Sunday afternoon. It is on CBS 47 Action News. Jacks, of course, it's the uh, Jags against the Chiefs. It's a 1 o'clock kickoff, and it will be hot. Temperatures are going to be in the 90s, about the low 90s at kickoff. Of course, it's always hotter in the stadium, even hotter on the field. So let's hope that's an advantage to the Jaguars, who are used to this heat, plenty of sunshine, so sunscreen and a lot of water for uh, Sunday afternoon. And we're tracking the tropics, of course, always tracking the tropics in the First Alert uh, Weather Center. And we start with, uh, well, we've got a lot out there. We have Dorian, which is sitting, of course, uh, near the south and North Carolina border. We had Tropical Storm Fernand, Fernand go on into Mexico uh, yesterday. That's dissipating now over the mountainous terrain. We have a disturbance, a couple of disturbances in the middle of the Atlantic, neither one of which looks very impressive. This northern one has no shot at getting across the Atlantic. That'll stay out in the North Atlantic. We have Tropical Storm Gabrielle over the Eastern Atlantic, and that's uh, headed more to the north, so that's not a problem. Right now, we're in good shape for at least the next seven days in the, the tropics. More of always, of course, tracking the tro uh, talking the tropics with Mike at ActionNewsJax.com and our first alert weather app. Dorian's track will continue northeast. It's a landfall very near the South North Carolina border. It's a mess, I'll tell you. Coastal areas and inland for a ways south in North Carolina. Then it's on off to the northeast from there, and of course, it will have no further impact on Jacksonville and northeastern Florida. Your first alert seven-day forecast then is hot with sunshine. Temperatures in the 90s all the way into the early and middle part of next week. Just a shot at an isolated afternoon storm for Monday through 
Thursday of next week, but it doesn't look like widespread rain. And nighttime lows actually fairly pleasant the next uh, couple of nights with uh, lower humidity allowing inland spots to dip into the 60s. Hey, I found a friend here at the beach, at least one anyway. It's Tom. Tom doesn't live here anymore, but he used to, and he's here for a, a class reunion. I think you said your, your 15th class reunion? 50th. Oh, 50th. I I would, I, I, you, you fooled me. All right, so you, you just came in today. What do you think of the beaches here? Oh, well, they're in great shape. The, the waves are great for the uh, surfers, and, uh, and everybody's having a good time out there, and there's a beautiful breeze down and, here. And the hotel is functioning fine, right? Functioning fine. Everything, uh, we heard all these ter horror stories up north. We come down here, and everything's working. So. Well, welcome back. back to <laughs> you bet, exactly. Welcome back home. And so thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Just real briefly, I'll show you what happened yesterday. A lot of this sand was put down at the bottom of the steps like this in an attempt to stop any water that might try to run over the dunes or through the dunes. And it worked, obviously, but now they had to dig these steps out. And you see that all up and down the beach in what otherwise was pretty good shape. And we'll show you the dunes this year, right now, versus three years ago after Matthew and First Alert forecast coming up in 15 minutes. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish from Jacksonville Beach. Coming up, more local coverage you can count on. First, Quirky Storm Solutions, the unique lengths local families went to protect their homes from Dorian. Mission shrink wrap is complete. <laughs> then, keeping St. Augustine above water, the new push to keep an increasingly vulnerable city safe from more than just hurricanes. Local stories that matter to you. Next on Action News Jax. What to Watch, brought to you by Ashley Home Store.
Yeah, more images from our side swipe with Dorian. Well, plastic wrap, a bladder full of water, and of course, that battle wagon here attached to the house. Neighbors across our area got pretty creative when it came to preparing for Hurricane Dorian. Action News Jack's Elizabeth Pace spoke to some neighbors behind some of the most unique ideas we saw to learn what worked and what didn't. Battle wagon home is still intact. Although this wasn't put to the test during Hurricane Dorian, he says he's better prepared for next time. Trial and error, but I'm just glad we didn't have to try to find my error. Scott Milestone says he lost part of his roof during Hurricane Irma, and he wasn't taking that chance with Dorian. He says it took him eight hours to strap his house to his Cadillac, but it only took a few hours to go viral. I thought it would be a lot lot heavier wind, so I just wasted my time, but I still think the process has a lot of viability due to the strength of the straps and the way they're anchored. Another woman amazed the internet when she plastic wrapped her home in Davis Shores. We got a little bit of water in the garage, um, a little bit in the connecting laundry room, but other than that, we did pretty good. Another Jacksonville couple stored their smart car right inside their living room so it wouldn't blow away. Two neighbors special ordered this 500 foot aqua dam from Louisiana. They told me it took four days to fill and place around the property. We found Florida Power and Light used it around one of their substations Wednesday. Insurance Journal says it could cost up to $12,000 on average. And although Dorian spared Northeast Florida, we're still in the middle of hurricane season, and these neighbors are holding on to these methods for the next storm. Reporting in Ponte Vedra Beach, Elizabeth Pace, CBS 47, Action News, Jacks. In St. John's County, a dog we showed you at 11 yesterday morning that was lost, being reunited with his owner. Action News Jack showed you when the dog was being held and fed in the back of a St. John's County uh, deputy's car. It was found wandering near the Reef restaurant during the storm. It was taken to a shelter, but the sheriff's office is working on contacting his owner. New at 5:30, JFRD says it made one rescue during Hurricane Dorian, a squirrel. Found by the emergency road access team is now being taken care of by a JFRD lieutenant and it is now named Storm. There's a swim advisory in effect for Duval County beaches. The health department will test the water today, but says it could be unsafe for days following Dorian. Officials say that floodwaters could contain sewage, debris, and other hazards. And the hurricane break for local students comes to an end tomorrow. On Friday, all of our students will be back in the classroom if they didn't already return today. So that includes Duval, Clay, and Nassau County Schools. St. John's County students return today. Your school districts will announce your makeup days. The Trump administration is canceling plans to phase out incandescent light bulbs. The Energy Department is rolling back light bulb efficiency standards that were supposed to go into effect January 1st. The standards would have gradually phased out incandescent and halogen bulbs for LEDs and fluorescent bulbs that can last as long as a decade. Federal officials say the newer bulbs cost too much. But environmental groups say the rollback will mean more pollution and could end up costing people more as they'll end up paying more money for energy. The mayor of Saxonville, Calais Campbell's season of giving kicks off today. For each month of the new football season, Calais has chosen a charity to donate up to $10,000. Live, this is CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News, Jackson 6. Local coverage you can count on. Right now, Hurricane Dorian is moving north, now hanging off the coast of South Carolina as a Category 2 storm. We have a live picture off the coast of Cape Fear, North Carolina there. And you can see and hear the wind whipping that American flag. Sky Action News Jacks will be up during this entire newscast, surveying the damage along our local beaches. And today's surf is still high as the waves cut through the sand up and down our coast. And we're also getting a first look at some of the damage done yesterday. Two people homeless after their house bunk sank. You see it here. And the St. Augustine Bayfront made it through, but now city leaders are trying to find a way to prepare for the next big storm. I'm Tanika Hughes. I'm John Bachman. Tonight, local leaders and neighbors agree for the most part we dodged the big one with Dorian. Tonight, we're getting all of your questions answered after the storm. Our team coverage continues tonight, starting with Action News Jack's first alert, Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish, who's live surveying some of the damage in Jacksonville Beach. Mike, from what you see, things held up well. 
Oh, you bet. Compared to three years ago when I was out here in 2016, this is a walk in the park. Having said that, there's evidence of the storm, and one thing that's a bit concerning is that it sort of set the table for future storms, whether it's a tropical storm, a hurricane, or even a nor'easter, to do more damage. But this, we fared pretty well. In fact, look at these dunes right now. When I came out here three years ago, these were like cliffs, and many of the dunes were literally gone. That's not the case this time around. Take a look at what I mean. In 2016, it was remarkable. Uh, uh, erosion, cliff like features all up and down the beaches from the constant ramming of the waves. Keep in mind, Matthew was a little more than 40 miles off our shore at its closest approach, versus Dorian, which was more like 90 to 100 miles off our shore. So, more than twice as far away Dorian was, despite its size and intensity. That helped out to some degree, at least with the wave action, and certainly with the winds. You can see what's left here. There's some uh, sea oats that have been pushed up in here, a little bit of seaweed, some minor, little bit of debris, and what's even more telling, some shells that are up there pushed into the dune. So the water got up here, what we call dune run-ups, uh, wave run-ups, I should say, made it all the way easily to the dunes. And it has left those waves and the high tides from yesterday, some stuff behind, if you will. There's a little bit of debris. It's not real widespread. It's not anything particularly serious. We have this two by four down here, which has nails in it. So you do want to be extra careful with this sort of stuff that's out here at the beach. But otherwise, it's really not too bad. We fared pretty well compared to three years ago. When I come back with the full first alert forecast at 615, it's a look ahead to your Friday and ever precious first alert weekend forecast. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish in Jack's Beach. All right, Sky Action News Jacks is getting a bird's eye view of our coastline. This is Volano Beach right now. Yeah, much of St. John's County again fared well, except for some parts of Volano Beach, yeah. and that's where we find Action News Jacks, Lorena Inkland, and Lorena. This is one area that faces a unique challenge. It really does, Tonika. And right now on your screen for our viewers, you can actually see live images from. My action news, Jax. Up above us right now, I could actually hear the chopper blades above me right now. You can see that unique challenge here in Volano Beach because this is a beach that's pretty narrow compared to other beaches in St. John's County. I'm standing right now next to a staircase and take a look at how quickly I could get to the water. I'm already here a little bit further and I get my shoes wet. And Dorian did not help that situation at all. Now, I want to show you the first video we have prepared for you right now. And while still Volano needs to be addressed, other beaches did very well in this storm. This is video from Sky Action News Jacks before Dorian, and you can see the built up dunes there still, so that's good news. Now, this is video today from after the storm. You can see the dunes held up in most of South Ponte Vedra, even St. Augustine. Our pilot did not find any glaring changes, and that's very good news as well, but that doesn't mean we're in the clear because remember, we're still in the middle of the the peak of the hurricane season. I spoke to county leaders today earlier who tells me that uh, one of the county leaders tells me that he's going to advocate for more money to renourish the beaches and fortify the dunes. In the meantime, I spoke to Floridians out at Mickler's Landing enjoying the day and they were breathing a sigh of relief. And we are so blessed um, to be here and enjoy this beautiful day now and back to normal life. Thank God nothing severely happened. And right now on your screen, we have the first alert storm tracker driving on A1A headed to Volano Beach. You can see what the view is there today. A much different view from what we had yesterday when I was showing you all that debris and all that water rushing onto A1A because of that breach that was there where a home used to be. And now there's a gaping hole. Now, according to Commissioner Jeremiah Blocker, who represents this area, they are working to, you know, get more money, get more funding to create a, a robust, Renourishment plan for the entire county. And again, while we're still in hurricane season, we did dodge this bullet with Dorian, and they're trying to take advantage of this time right now to really make sure that this beach is protected. Reporting live from Volano Beach, Lorena Inkland, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jacks. Our crews say that beach erosion in St. John's County happened in a matter of minutes and rose to several feet yesterday. Action News Jax got to St. Augustine around 9 Tuesday night, and then by the time we were showing you photos around 11 yesterday morning, we saw about four and a half foot drop offs. Our first look weather team says the constant pounding of waves can literally cut away at the beach. Now, St. Augustine Bayfront survived the storm, but we did see water buildup. We showed you yesterday when it started to flood, even just with the brush from Dorian. And we, we 
returned to the area today. Action News Jack's investigator Bridget Matter found out there's a plan in the works to fix the drainage issue. Portions of St. Augustine has seen major flooding in past hurricanes. Action News Jack's Sky Vision drone is over the St. Augustine Bayfront where we saw some pooling and flooding from only the outer bands of Dorian. Water many times rushes over the 60 year old seawall into the road. Now, the city and Army Corps of Engineers are working together to find some solution for better drainage throughout the historic city. The city of St. Augustine approached the Army Corps of Engineers last year requesting a comprehensive study of the historic city that could find a solution to flooding areas. The study will cost right around $3 million to complete. Funding from Congress has been requested. Once approved, the city will identify trouble spots in a study that's estimated to take about 36 months to complete. Solutions could include dredging or higher seawalls, to name a few. If additional funds are granted, it could take four to five years for construction to begin. Bridget Matter, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. And Neptune Beach was hit hard by surf, churned up by Dorian. Remember, some businesses are right on the beach, yards from the ocean. Action News Jax, Megan Moriarty joins us live there tonight. And Megan, you talk with some businesses who are just opening back up after being closed for about three days. Yeah, North Beach Fish Camp was one of those businesses, and right now they're open. Customers are inside and enjoying a meal. But I was here two days ago when they were boarded up for Dorian, and it was a different story. This window here was covered with a black sheet, and there were sandbags all around down here. Sky Action News Jax is giving us a live look overhead at some of the other businesses that were closed because of Dorian. We're back at it, so we're excited that everybody's out on the streets. The beach's town center is now back to its lively self after being forced to close from Hurricane Dorian. It's a big hit. Tiffany Olliser says she closed up Jack's surf and paddle on Labor Day after getting word of the storm. It's going to affect us. This is one of our last big weekends, you know, before we get into back to school and everybody kind of. Doesn't come to the beach as much, so the weekends are really important to the local businesses. Ulcer and other business owners believe it's a hard hit to their typical holiday profit, but better safe than sorry. We did take a little bit of a loss being closed, but the safety of our you know guests and protection of the building is the most important thing. And businesses say that they are excited for this weekend, for the good weather, and for more customers to come in. Reporting at the Beaches Town Center, Megan Moriarty, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. And all of the businesses had to close on Labor Day weekend. According to a study from Wompley, a consumer blog, most local businesses can actually drop off when it comes to Labor Day to regular weekends. Locally, however, downtown Jacksonville businesses told us they took a hit when the FSU Boise State game moved to Tallahassee because of the storm. We reached out to the city to see exactly how much we lost, and we hope to get those numbers for you in the coming days. Tonight, new video from the Bahamas shows the U.S. Coast Guard rescuing people now three days after Dorian left the coast. The official death toll, 23, but Bahamian natives say there could be hundreds more dead. Well, plenty of Floridians say they want to help, but as Action News Jack's Danny Bozzini finds, not everyone's charity is a reputable one. Towns destroyed, homes gone, and families displaced. Florida may have been spared, but the Bahamas are suffering. It's just like a whole island is going to have to be rebuilt and how many how long is that going to take and what is going to happen to all the people that are alive and have nothing Nora Jean Sawyer and her family have relatives in the Bahamas who barely made it out alive families who now have nothing she has nothing only the clothes on her back so that family has nothing at all everything is destroyed the islands need help supplies anything our local community is already organizing relief efforts to do just that. But before you send in your donations, you need to make sure they will actually be going to the people that need it most. Unfortunately, when we see catastrophic events like these, we also see scammers rush in to prey on the good intentions of generous Floridians. Attorney General Ashley Moody says you have to vet the charity you plan on donating to. Action News Jax first told you earlier this week there have already been fake websites set up. To determine whether the charity is legitimate, use charitynavigator.org. Once you do that, you can help ensure relief goes to those who need it most. All that's on my mind is how can we help? What do we do next? We can't just keep talking about what we see. We have to now come up with a plan 
to help as many people as we can. Danny Bozzini, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. And time for action. Attorney General's office says that you, if you suspect any charity fraud, call 866-NO-SCAM. Plenty of Action News Jax viewers have reached out asking how they can help those in the Bahamas. So Action News Jax is teaming up with 104.5 WOKV for our joint Bahamas relief effort. Now the Action News Jax family focus convoy of care will be set up next Tuesday right at that roundabout near Maggiano's. You know that's our place. We're going to be at the town center uh, from 7 in the morning until 2 that afternoon collecting water, baby supplies, flashlights, batteries, hygiene products and dog food and so that information is going to be all over our website thank you so much everyone who's asked if they can help and let's show up and do what we do best that's right plenty of action news jacks viewers have asked about trash pickup as well duval county pushing things back a day so if you were supposed to have pickup yesterday well it hopefully came today as it did in clay st john's county is back to their regular schedule glenn county resumes friday and if you want to stay informed about Dorian's track and the local progress being made after the storm, keep up with us on ActionNewsJax.com. Well, in other headlines in Duval County tonight, four people, including a child, are recovering after an overnight shooting. It happened on West 67th, 62nd Street on the west side. Action News Jax and Marla Phillips talked to one man who heard gunshots from his front porch. The shooting happened here at the intersection of Vermilion Street and West 62nd Street last night. This is the only evidence that a crime happened here. One neighbor tells me he heard yelling, and shortly after, he heard several gunshots. 19 year old Joshua Jordan calls this neighborhood on Jacksonville's West Side home. It's a pretty good neighborhood. You know, it's people getting along right here. But that feeling changed around 8 o'clock Wednesday night when four people became victims of gun violence, including a juvenile. It's crazy. Jordan says he was on his porch when he heard the gunshots. You hear people yelling, you hear people say, no, 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 a whole bunch of shots. Jordan tells me he didn't know the victims and never expected four people to get shot so close to his home. This JSO crime map database show over the last month there were 46 reports of crime within a one mile radius. According to the map, nearly a dozen of those reports involved domestic violence. Now there's only one thing left for Jordan to do. You got to just stay on and just keep praying. JSO tells me their injuries were not life threatening, and if you have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call them. Reporting here on the West Side, I'm Jamar Little Phillips, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jags. Reunited after a storm ahead at 6:30, the way a dog owner found their furry friend after Hurricane Dorian. Local relief efforts for those struggling in the Bahamas next at six. The major mission underway, and how you can help. Meanwhile, Dorian moving closer to North Carolina and South Carolina coast. A live look right now at Frying Pan Tower, the American flag just 30 miles off the coast of North Carolina.
New video shows the incredible wrath that Dorian unleashed over mm -hmm. the last two days in the Bahamas. Just about everything on the Abaco Island succumbed to constant category five force wind survivors. They need help. It's not just us. Everybody's hurting. We're not any worse than anybody else. Everybody is hurting, and we thank God for life. Right now, the official death toll is at 23, but the Bahamas Press reports that the government has approved an order for 200 body bags. And locally tonight, they're calling all volunteers to the Seawalk Hotel in Jacksonville Beach. This meeting is being held by the Adventures in God's Creation and Island Crisis Flyers missions to help the Bahamas. In the last hour, Action News Jax met with the president of Boomerang Air Charter. This charter service is preparing to send planes to the Bahamas filled with supplies. President Elliot Mincer tells me that they need everything you can imagine. Join us tonight as we bring you the latest from this meeting and what's being done in our area to help those in need. This time yesterday, water was waist deep in the Davis Shores area of St. John's County. During high tide, the water got up four feet along Coquina Avenue. Today, when we went back, the water mostly cleared out, but some had a few inches of flood damage in their homes. Uh, breach, but it was a slow trickle, so we got a couple inches compared to the couple feet that were outside of the house. Local firefighters were handing out cleaning supplies for people with flood damage. New video from Nassau County shows cleanup after the storm. We brought you their update live on Facebook this afternoon. Emergency workers say six homes were damaged on Amelia Island. The curfew there no longer in effect. Action News Jax has some new video of some of the damage done to the Jax Beach Pier. The pier is already scheduled to close this fall for two years while crews start major repairs. Now, the pier has taken a beating in our recent hurricanes, and this is some of what we saw yesterday as Dorian lashed at the pillars there. And the reason that it's shutting down is because of this. Take a look. Major damage caused by Hurricane Matthew back in 2016, at least 350 feet of the pier was lost and it's been closed since. You can barely even see it there. Now with the new design, the end of the pier will gradually rise to eight feet, helping it better survive the storm. Now certified Jacksonville's most accurate weather forecast, Action News Jack's first alert weather. Hey, from Jack's Beach, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris. Sort of a post assessment after Doreen. Yes, it's a, it's a tough job this afternoon here on the beaches. I actually prefer much to be in shorts or, or uh, swimming trunks, but you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, let's talk first weather, though, and I'll get you through the weekend here. First, Jack's Beach First Alert Sky Cam Network. Take a look at from Four Point Sheraton, which is actually very close to where I'm standing right here at Jack's Beach. You'll see a shot of our pier, just a few high, thin clouds. Otherwise, we're in pretty good shape uh, this afternoon looking at our First Alert Sky Cam Network. Network. I'll show you what that pier looked like three years ago because it was a lot different than even during Doreen, but especially shortly thereafter. Or so, speaking of the beach, we have your beach forecast, and we're looking at a surf of uh, just a couple of feet over the next 24 to 48 hours. It's really very pleasant. The rip current risk is decreasing. That's good news. It's becoming safer. Of course, you always want to be swimming and surfing with a buddy or as near a lifeguard as at all possible, but the overall conditions have certainly improved. And we're looking at water. Water temperatures that are still in the low to mid 80s didn't go down all that much after the storm. Sometimes we get some upwelling after a storm like Dorian. First of all, Doppler HD is certainly very quiet right now and is going to stay that way through this evening. We're looking at a very pleasant evening. Temperatures just gradually dropping through the 80s into the 70s overnight. And check out Dorian so far. Right now it's about ready to make landfall, very near landfall of the North and South Carolina borders, not too far from Myrtle Beach. The track started, of course, as a tropical wave, an African tropical wave over the East Atlantic, cut across the Central Atlantic, kind of stair-stepped its way with a northwest turn and then just decimated, of course, the Bahamas, as we all well know, is a Category 5 hurricane where it stalled and then finally crawled up the coast east of Florida, about 100 miles east of Jacksonville, and is now residing off the Carolina coast. It'll accelerate to the northeast, and that'll be all she wrote for Dorian, finally. So tomorrow morning, we start out relatively mild. Temperatures in the 60s will warm to the 90-degree-plus range or so in the afternoon. There's little or no rainfall expected. That'll continue right on into Saturday. And let's jump right ahead to your first alert seven day forecast through the weekend. It looks hot. Temperatures are going to make
make it into the 90s tomorrow and through the weekend, and in fact, into the early and middle part of next week. Little or no rainfall outside of some isolated afternoon thunderstorms with the sea breeze during the early and middle part of next week. So we're looking at temperatures that are going to be above average. In other words, about seven or eight degrees or so above average. The Jacksonville Beach Pier, while it's st still over the, about, about 250 yards over my right shoulder here, you can see right now surfers taking a wave there right now. It is a very pretty afternoon. I want to show you what it looked like three years ago, you guys, because it was a dramatic difference with uh, Matthew then just hammering our beaches with tremendous season surf just 40 to 50 miles offshore, about half the distance that Dorian was. So we've, we've fared better this time around. Where I'm standing right now, just to give you an idea, where I'm standing right now was the dune line about five years ago. Well, that's where the dunes are now. So we've lost a lot of the dunes and they're just starting now to recover. And you see some special treasures like this, you guys, like this shell. Doesn't look like much, right? Happens to be my daughter's favorite shell. It's not real common on this beach. And I kind of had to just think, you know what? This would be a treasure for her. And there are several treasures out here after the storm. From Jack's Beach, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist, Mike Burrish. And for the latest on Dorian as it heads up our coast, and for any of our local conditions, you can keep up with the Burrish blog on ActionNewsJax.com. He's so thoughtful, always thinking of other folks that Mike Burrish. God, I love him. All right, tonight, all new on Fox 30 at 10, a hypo, hypodermic needle spotted in the ice cream case at a local grocery store. What the big chain saying about this fine? Then at 11, a roadway project in Clay County will soon be impacting drivers. Why drivers will be taking a detour for several months tonight on Action News Jacks at 11. And coming up at 6, a baby boom during the hurricane, the specific weather condition that can send pregnant moms into labor.
Orange Park Medical says six boys and girls were born while we were tracking Torian. The hospital released a statement saying hurricanes cause low barometric pressure, which of course we knew, and that can bring on labor. I did not realize that. The hospital also said anytime there's a hurricane in the area, it makes sure their team is ready for an influx of patients. Action News Jax is your official Jaguar stations taking a live look at the bank, an area that dodged a lot of the worst of Dorian. Game day returns Sunday as the Jags get ready to take on the Chiefs. Join the Action Sports Jax team tonight as we broadcast Jags All Access live from Mellow Mushroom in Avondale. Coverage starts at 7 on Fox 30. CBS Evening News is up next on CBS 47. At 6 30 on Fox 30, from strapping a home down to a caddy to wrapping a house in plastic, the way the homeowners work to protect their homes from Dorian. This is Fox 30 Action News Jax at 6.30. Local coverage you can count on. Right now, Hurricane Dorian moving up the East Coast. A live look of the American flag blowing about 30 miles off the coast of North Carolina as Dorian hitting the Carolinas hard right now. The hurricane already caused flooding in South Carolina. Look at this. Water rushing over. Somebody drove their Jeep Cherokee onto the beach as Dorian was approaching, and that's how it ended, folks. Police say they found it locked and abandoned. This was in Myrtle Beach. The storm caused a live wire to fall into floodwaters, causing an explosion also in South Carolina. Wow. I'm John Bachman. And I'm Tanika Hughes. And since Dorian left the coast of Florida, it will make its first U.S. landfall along the Carolina coast. Now, the storm caused tornado, tornado warnings in the Carolinas. It will also bring high winds. And this leads to our team coverage. We start with Action News Jack's first alert Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish, live on location there in Jacksonville Beach. And Mike Dorian might be moving away from our coast, but the hurricane did leave its mark on the beaches. It sure did. Not like three years ago, Tanika, but still, it's somewhat significant. You certainly can tell that the, the beach has had to weather a storm. And you can see right here, it's sort of the, I like to call it the moraine of a, a storm surge or of wave action. And by that, I mean, when you talk about a glacier and the leading edge of a glacier, as far as it got, you'll find what's called the moraine of the glacier. And it's got little, it's got bolts, in some cases, huge boulders. You can still find it this day, by the way, through parts of the Midwest and northern U.S. It's the leading edge of how far that glacier got. It leaves a bunch of debris and boulders. Well, in this case, the waves and the high tides left stuff like straw and some other. Uh, there's a little bit of seaweed in here, little pieces of, uh, of uh, leftover garbage, quite frankly, honestly, in here. But it's not anything that terribly significant, but also some boards. And some of these may very, be, very well be from our Jacksonville Beach Pier, which we have video of from this morning. We uh, have flyover of uh, the Jacksonville Beach Pier as drone flew over the pier to look at any possible additional damage that has been done since 16 in Matthew and 17 in Irma. And really, we did pretty well. There are a few boards that are missing, and there's a little gazebo-like structure at the end that's sort of bent inward toward the west, in other words, clearly indicating that uh, there was a lot of wave action. And of course, it was getting hammered yesterday by those 20-plus foot waves. But otherwise, 
we did pretty well compared to three years ago when we literally had cliffs left after the erosion and the beating that the beaches took after Matthew. So we did okay this time around for the most part. Unfortunately, it did uh, bring a lot of sand up here. It took some sand away, brought some sand in. It did cover some of the dunes with water and wave run up. So it is a little bit worrisome for any future storms this hurricane season or perhaps a winter nor'easter and how these beaches might fare. But this time around, the dunes did their thing despite being so severely damaged three years ago, and that's good news. I'll have a full first alert forecast look ahead to that ever important weekend in about 15 minutes. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish from Jack's Beach. Right now, the city and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers working to figure out what needs to be done, if anything, to repair the beaches after Hurricane Dorian. As you heard Mike say, not a lot of damage done. Sky Action News Jacks flew over the uh, beaches there at Jacks Beach, and Action News Jacks Megan Moriarty spoke to the project manager about the next steps for our beaches. The U.S. Army Corps is in charge of building up this beach to protect the dunes over there, which are owned by the city of Jacksonville. And tomorrow, both entities are going to walk the entirety of this beach to assess and see if there's any significant damage. Hurricane Dorian came and went, taking some of Duval County's beaches with it. I feel that there's been a good amount of erosion. Chris Howard spends a good amount of his time at Jacksonville Beach and says he's noticed an impact. I'm out here consistently uh, walking it and four or five days a week and it's been I guess a consistent uh, decrease of sand out here. A formal evaluation will take place tomorrow. U.S. Army Corps and officials with the city of Jacksonville will assess Jacksonville, Neptune and Atlantic Beach. They'll check for damage and see how much actually washed out to sea before making a final decision on emergency renourishment. There could always be more sand. I mean, just saves our beaches. Reporting at Jacksonville Beach, Megan Moriarty, Fox 30 Action News, Jack. There is a swim advisory in effect for Duval County beaches. The health department will test the water today, but says it could be unsafe for days following Dorian. Officials say that floodwaters could contain sewage, debris, and other hazards. The hurricane break for local students comes to an end tomorrow. Friday, all of our students will be back in class if they didn't already go back today. Some actually did. That includes Duval, Clay, and Nassau counties going back tomorrow. St. John's County uh, students uh, go back tomorrow as well. Your school districts will be announcing your makeup days. Dorian's impact was mostly felt by Volano Beach. What you're seeing is the beach before the storm on the left side, and meanwhile, the right side is the beach after the storm. Action News Jack's Lorena Inkland explains that much of the beach was eaten away by the waves. The commissioner who we spoke to surveyed this area both by land and by plane, and he was focusing on this area right here that we were showing you yesterday. You can see there's sand here now, but it was also an area where water was rushing onto A1A. And while Dorian wasn't as bad as Matthew and Irma, it did reveal this weakness along the Villano coast. Much of the beach was eaten away by the ferocious waves caused by Dorian. Now, many of the homes' back porches meet the sea instead of the beach. Commissioner Jeremiah Blocker represents the property owners who live here. We're very blessed. We really dodged a bullet. He was up in the air today taking a look at the damage from above. So far, it looks like the damage is contained to, to one or two minor areas. This is one of those areas. We showed you how storm surge rushed onto A1A Wednesday afternoon. One major factor that likely contributed to the breach is this. This is a Google image of the home that used to stand here, but now it's a gaping hole, meaning easy access for seawater to make its way inland. Blocker says commissioners recently approved a project by the Army Corps of Engineers for dune restoration and beach renourishment. You know, what we want to do is we want to have a robust, ongoing beach renourishment program. Many homeowners are relieved Dorian did not leave a major mark. But its passage is a sobering reminder that hurricane season is far from over. Here's yet another example of the erosion. You can even see exposed piping here from those waves that were crashing on to the sand here. Now, according to the commissioner we spoke to, he says that they have hired a full time coastal engineer to take a look at things like this. And in the meantime, they're in the bidding process to figure out which company will work on the beach renourishment. Reporting from Verlano Beach, Lorena Inclan, Fox 30, Action News Jacks. Tonight, a local couple homeless following their sailboat getting. Uh, hit by the rocks there and sinking partially. This is all after Hurricane Dorian. Action News Jack's Sky Vision flew over the boat, and Action News Jack's Alicia Terenkine caught up with the owners today who say that they're not sure what they're going to do next. 
Isaac Allen and his girlfriend Madison spent Thursday morning pulling out clothes, a scooter, a generator, and anything else they could from inside their little red sailboat. It's where they lived the last six months. It was our everything. It was our home. Our, it has all of our belongings. Every it's, it's our whole life right here. When Hurricane Dorian hit, they took shelter in a hotel with family. Their boat was knocked loose twice during the storm and had to be retied down. When we got here this morning, we found the boat partially submerged. We redid everything in the boat new floors, new TVs, new countertops. And Madison tells us it wasn't just her and her boyfriend whose sailboat got stuck out here. If you look over here, you'll notice that's her brother's white sailboat up against those rocks. It needs you know, to be pumped out. If they can pump it out and then and use that lift bag, it'll lift it, should lift it right up. The couple tells us they don't have insurance and they're not sure what to do next. We don't even know uh, where the holes are, how many holes there are, what's going to happen, how we're going to get it out of the water. We, we just got to play it by ear, see who can help us with what. Reporting near the Intracoastal Bridge on Beach Boulevard, Alicia Tarancon, Fox 30, Action News Jax. An Action News Jax investigation uncovers more than 100 complaints of price gouging filed against local businesses. 80% of the complaints involved gas and water. In Jacksonville, there were 85 formal price gouging complaints filed with Florida's Attorney General. There were 11 in St. John's, 12 in Clay, and 19 reports out of Nassau County. Senator Rick Scott commended Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry for his preparations for Dorian at the Emergency Operations Center. He came to show appreciation for the disaster preparedness team for their response to Hurricane Dorian. The senator says the real relief needs to go to the Bahamas now. I think everybody's always said, you know, you can rebuild homes, but you can't rebuild a life. And I think everybody took that seriously. Senator Scott says the Bahamas is going to need a lot of international support in order to get back to normal. New at 6.30, Florida Power and Light says all of its customers now have power after it was affected by Dorian. This is a new video of crews restoring power to those affected by the storm. The company says they restored power to more than 160,000 people. FPL says the average restoration time was more than an hour for customers. The Bahamas Press says the island's government secured the delivery of nearly 200 body bags following Hurricane Dorian. And this is some new video showing what the island went through. And they went through this for more than 30 hours. Action News Jack's Danny Bozzini sat down with the family whose relatives barely made it out of Freeport, Bahamas alive. As the water started rising inside their home in Freeport, the family became so desperate that they actually placed their two young kids inside their kitchen cabinets. If you take a closer look, you can see the two kids laying in the upper cabinets, the highest ground their mother could find. If she doesn't get out the house, she's not going to make it. That's what was racing through Debbie Trimble's mind last week while her relatives in Freeport were facing Hurricane Dorian's fury. Her cousin sent a voice text to everyone. You could hear the emotion in her about to cry. She says Amber sent us pictures showing that the water was up to her chest and because her children couldn't stand in it, she put the children in the cabinets to protect them, put them on higher ground. Moments after that text, all communication was lost. And that's when the fear set in. You wanted to cry, but you wanted to be hopeful. You wanted to um, hold on to that hope and hold on to your faith and prayer that God was going to see him through. These are pictures Tremble got from her cousin showing just how high the water had gotten inside their home. You can see the refrigerator floating inside. Days went by with no updates. Then finally on Tuesday, her prayers were answered. Somebody sent us another voice text screaming, saying, we found her, we found her, we have her. I just started crying. I literally started crying tears of joy. She tells me Amber and her two kids survived by holding on to a nearby tree. They were actually hanging on a tree for a day and a half. These are photos Tribble was sent that show the destruction her family is facing in Freeport. Tribble tells me that unfortunately this is only one of many homes that look like this. In the studio, Danny Bozzini, Fox 30, Action News Jax. Publix is donating $250,000 to Hurricane Dorian relief efforts in the Bahamas. Action News Jax told you when the storm devastated Grand Bahama Island and its surrounding islands, Publix also collecting donations for the American Red Cross at all of its registers.
And Action News Jack's family focus and our news partner 104.5 WOKV. We're hosting our convoy of care. Let's get to work to help the people impacted by Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas. We are going to be set up at the town center next Tuesday, September 10th, from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. right outside of Maggiano's. And some of the things we're looking for are on your screen right now: water, baby supplies, hygiene products, flashlights, batteries, dog food. Come on out and give, and let's help get these folks back on their feet. As a reminder, we're in the peak of hurricane season. On the First Alert Weather app, you can find out how to prepare for a hurricane and track Hurricane Dorian as it continues to move north towards the Carolinas right now. The app is free in the App Store. And let's take a live look now at TIAA Bank Field, where in three days, the Jaguars will take on the Kansas City Chiefs for the first game of the season. This is when it counts, folks. Action News Jacks has you covered when it comes to the Jags. We're getting you ready for that first preseason, the first season game. Uh, countdown to kickoff. It's Sunday at 11:30 on CBS 47, followed by the game at 1. Then we're going to have post-game coverage on the Action News Jacks app and Facebook Live. After a day of weather like yesterday and a brush by by Hurricane Dorian, well, it's a beach is where you ought to be. I'm Action News Jax, Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish with your first of the weekend forecast and that Jags kickoff forecast after the break. We're on our way, Mike. We're on our way. From using plastic wrap to strapping a home, the unique items homeowners use to prevent their house from being damaged by Dorian. And reunited after a hurricane, how long it took for an owner to find his dog? From wrapping a house in plastic to strapping it down, attaching it to an Escalade. Some Floridians have done it all. Action News Jack's Elizabeth Pace explains the ways some homeowners protected their home from damage. 
Battle Wagon Home is still intact. Although this wasn't put to the test during Hurricane Dorian, he says he's better prepared for next time. Trial and error, but I'm just glad we didn't have to try to find my error. Scott Milestone says he lost part of his roof during Hurricane Irma, and he wasn't taking that chance with Dorian. He says it took him eight hours to strap his house to his Cadillac, but it only took a few hours to go viral. I thought it would be a lot lot heavier wind, so I just wasted my time, but I still think the process has a lot of viability due to the strength of the straps and the way they're anchored. Another woman amazed the internet when she plastic wrapped her home in Davis Shores. We got a little bit of water in the garage, um, a little bit in the connecting laundry room, but other than that, we did pretty good. Another Jacksonville couple stored their smart car right inside their living room so it wouldn't blow away. Two neighbors special ordered this 500 foot aqua dam from Louisiana. They told me it took four days to fill and place around the property. We found Florida Power and Light used it around one of their substations Wednesday. Insurance Journal says it could cost up to $12,000 on average. And although Dorian spared Northeast Florida, we're still in the middle of hurricane season, and these neighbors are holding. Holding on to these methods for the next storm. Reporting in Ponte Vedra Beach, Elizabeth Pace, Fox 30, Action News, Jax. In St. John's County, a lost dog we showed you at 11 yesterday morning is being reunited with his owner. Action News Jack showed you when the dog was being held and fed in the back of a St. John's County deputy's car. It was found wandering near the Reef Restaurant during the storm, and the owner picked him up shortly after our video aired. It was taken to the shelter, uh, but the sheriff's office is working on connecting. Him to the owner. I believe the dog was picked up shortly after we aired the video. Now, certified Jacksonville's most accurate weather forecast, Action News Jack's first alert weather. Well, what a difference a day makes. We're in the sunshine at Jack's Beach and an offshore wind that's a west wind blowing toward the beautiful water. So the, the waves are clean, so to speak, although not as big as they were last night and early this morning. Of course, conditions continuing to rapidly improve the water conditions overall, and it's getting a little bit safer out there. But you should always swim and surf with a buddy and as near a lifeguard as at all possible. Although, as near a lifeguard as at all possible this time of year becomes a little bit more difficult because the lifeguards are not regularly stationed on the beaches after Labor Day. At least on weekdays. They're still out on the weekends until about October 1st, but use some extra care. Let's get right to your first alert forecast. Uh, first of the Doppler HD, nice and quiet uh, this afternoon and evening. After anywhere from about two to five inches of rain at the coast, about one to three inches along I-95, and barely anything, uh, at least not much anyway, west of, inter uh, west of Highway 301. Those were two days totals uh, from uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. It's now dry and will be through this evening. And actually, will be for a while. You might actually need a little rain here in about a week's time or so. Check out your temperatures. That is a big part of the story as we go through the next five days. It's going to be hot. Uh, now, the good news is it will be relatively mild at night. We have lower humidity, so we will see temperatures dropping at night. Some of the nights are now longer, a little bit uh, longer as well, so that helps. But otherwise, we're looking at highs in the 90s right on through your weekend and 90 plus into next week. That's well above the average, which is in the upper 80s. And then Sunday, it's kickoff time. NFL is underway. Actually, starts tonight. Rumor has it it's Packers at Bears. Big ball game, but even bigger on Sunday afternoon. It's the Jaguars taking on the Chiefs right here at home. Uh, and you're looking at a kickoff at 1 o'clock, CBS 47, Action News Jackson. It'll be hot. Uh, partly to mostly sunny sky and in the low 90s or maybe an isolated afternoon thunderstorm, but it looks to be largely dry. And then we're tracking the tropics, of course, and we have uh, several disturbances, which uh, we'll hear more about in just a second out over the Atlantic. But look at Dorian's forecast track now, which is very near the Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina border. It'll move northeast over parts of far eastern North Carolina, not too far from Wilmington and the Outer Banks, and then finally go out to sea. But that's an area hard hit by Florence almost a year ago. So this is going to be a tough hit on the Carolina coast. And there's plenty of other activity out in the tropics, too, though. And for more on that, we go to certified broadcast meteorologist Garrett Beambaugh. We're always tracking the tropics here in the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center. Let's take a look what's going on out in the Pacific and Atlantic Basin right now as we approach the peak of hurricane season. And essentially, we are in the peak of hurricane season. Tropical Depression 12E is going to be staying in depression south of Hawaii. There's Juliet, also going to be going to the west, not impacting Hawaii right now. We continue monitoring Dorian back in the Atlantic Basin after Fair Nod went into the coast of Mexico from the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical wave moving off to the north, not going to be in impacting the 
between Lesser Antilles likely. Also have Gabrielle in the eastern Atlantic. That's going to be going off to the north. Nothing for us to worry about. We'll be watching a tropical wave coming off the west coast of Africa right now as it progresses off to the west. So quite the active basin in the Pacific and the Atlantic here as again we essentially are in the peak of hurricane season. Climatologically speaking, September 10th is the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. From the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Garrett Beatonball. Good news is there's nothing threatening us locally anytime soon. More in talking the tropics with Mike at ActionNewsJacks.com. And you can download for free the First Alert Weather Hot app. Hot the next seven days. Temperatures in the 90s for highs, lows in the 60s and 70s. Just an isolated afternoon storm next week. But a pleasant evening tonight. It's very nice out here at Jack's Beach. We're on the dune line here where the water did get to a little bit uh, earlier yesterday, of course, and last evening. But it's in pretty good shape overall. From Jack's Beach, I'm Action News Jacks Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. What to Watch, brought to you by Ashley Home Store. Local sports show in Jacksonville. This is Action Sports Jacks, powered by Safe Touch Security. Say hello for Mellow Mushroom. It's National Cheese Pizza Day. Good day to have Jaguars All Access coming up at 7 o'clock. It's season opener time in the NFL tonight, but also this weekend here in Jacksonville. Brent Morton, along with Jeff Lagerman, let's get right to it. What a fun matchup on Sunday. Jaguars host the Chiefs, who are Super Bowl favorites in 2019, and they get Patrick Mahomes. Well, he's the reigning MVP in the National Football League, and what's most impressive about him, if you took every player in the National Football League right now, made them a free agent, and then had another draft, he would be picked first overall without doubt. Absolutely, but do the Jaguars have the best quarterback they've had since... 
maybe the Brunel days? Well, I, I don't know. And, and we're, I think there's a lot of unknowns with that with Nick Foles. You know, Nick Foles in his career only has started 10 and 11 games twice in his career. So he's never started 16 games. Now his passer rate in the postseason is unbelievable. So we know he has the ability to elevate his play in the postseason. But can he do it for 16 games with the team? We're going to find out. Team coverage tonight as the Jaguar schedule got shifted around, which means practice was a little bit later. Let's throw it to Jags headquarters. Action Sports Jacks Dan Hicken hanging out over there late this afternoon with more on the team. Certainly a strange work week for the Jacksonville Jaguars when you think about it with Hurricane Dorian providing some distractions. Now a hurricane type of an offense is coming to town with the Kansas City Chiefs. But note this. Did you know that the Jacksonville Jaguar defense held Patrick Mahomes to no touchdown passes one year ago? The only team to do that. They also held Mahomes to his lowest quarterback rating of the season. So the Jaguars know what they're doing on defense. Now with the addition of Nick Foles, can they score enough points? If it's a shootout, that favors Kansas City. If they can keep it a low-scoring game, that would certainly favor the Jaguars. And let the sun rain. Yeah, let it come down and be hot as the Jaguars get ready for Kansas City Sunday at 1 o'clock here at the bank. That's the story here at the stadium. I'm Dan Hicken, Action Sports Jacks. Jaguars all access tonight, Fox 30, 7 o'clock. Guys, we'll send it back to you. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll be back at 10. Fox 30 Action News Jax is a Cox Media Group station. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. That'd be great. Let's go. Any love or disrespect, we're going to handle that. Football season starts tonight. Optimism is high in Jacksonville and all over the NFL. Mahomes, that shoulder shake. 
Buys time. Fires on the run. West for the touchdown. The Jags welcome last year's MVP in this year's Super Bowl favorites to town on Sunday. So you're talking about someone who's obviously an exceptional athlete. Hurricane parties are over. It's football party time now. Kick off the season with us right now on Jaguars All Access. This is Jaguars All Access, brought to you by Fields Auto Group, including Jaguar Jacksonville. It's time to step up to luxury. Go to FieldsAuto.com. Fields matters because you matter. Oh, what a week it's been around the Jacksonville area and really all over the state of Florida, now going up to Georgia and the Carolinas as well. Goodbye, Hurricane Dorian. Happy football season instead. Thoughts and prayers, of course, with everybody in the Bahamas and everybody north of us now dealing with the storm. Meanwhile, on Sunday, we'll deal with a home opener, a season opener for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's football time, finally, at the bank on Sunday at 1 o'clock on CBS 47, Jaguars and Chiefs. And hello and welcome back to Mellow Mushroom. How about some noise here at Mellow Mushroom in Avondale? Good to be back. National Cheese Pizza Day, appropriate here at Mellow Mushroom for Jaguars All Access, presented by Fields Auto Group. Brent Martin along with Jeff Lagerman, and we'll have a special guest in just a moment. Jaguars shifted all around because of the storm. Practice canceled yesterday. They practiced today, got back to the facility. Does it impact the football game? Well, if you look at it from this standpoint, a typical Wednesday is about 33% of a week's preparation. And the Jaguars lost some of that. Now, the one thing that they had the benefit of is that they had Monday to kind of make up for some of that loss. But the other thing, too, Brent, you go from 90 guys in a locker room down to 53, and it typically takes a couple days for that dynamic to settle. They didn't have that luxury because of Hurricane Dorian. Jaguars had to be back at noon at the facility. Everybody's back. Everybody's safe. And they were outside practicing in the heat. And the heat will be a factor on Sunday. It will be in the mid-90s, probably feel close to 100 on Sunday. Well, which could end up breaking a, a, a single game high at TIA Bank Field history. So, uh, look, you want it to be as hot as possible. The Kansas City Chiefs come from the Midwest. Yes, it can be hot there in the Midwest, but not day in, day out like it is here in Jacksonville. The one thing I will say, I thought the same thing when the Buffalo Bills were coming in for an opener a few years ago, and the Buffalo Bills put it to the Jaguars. Yeah, it doesn't always provide such an advantage. You still have to play well. Caught up with some players and the coach this afternoon. I just see it. I was good, man. We humans too. We gotta go through, you know, situations sometimes that everybody else gotta go through. It's definitely a, a different week, um, but the coaches, you know, we were able to get some work done on Monday, and then you know, coach did a great job of allowing us to be with our families and ultimately make sure that's our number one priority. With modern technology, we're able to film installs and get installs at home. A quick look at some Jaguars notes as well as we take a peek ahead. Armstead now number 23 could be the second guy in on Sunday behind Leonard Fournette, the rookie out of Temple. Quincy Williams ready to go, full go. Probably see him start at the weak side linebacker position. Maybe. They still haven't said officially. And, of course, the new faces, like Jeff mentioned, there's been some acquisitions. Roster from 90 to 53 and then, of course, 10 practice players as well. In overtime, pressure coming. Maddox turns and throws. It's intercepted. Rasheen Mathis has got it. He's going to the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jaguars. They beat the Steelers. Oh, he's homegrown and one of the favorites of all time, one of the best of all time. How about Rasheen Mathis, Jaguars corner? Played his high school ball at Inglewood. Played at Bethune-Cookman. And then, of course, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Finished up his career with the Detroit Lions. Still looks like he could play right now, in fact. And let's welcome in Rasheen Mathis to Jaguars All Access. Great to have you, man. Great to be here. Great to hear. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this All-25 thing uh, that Jaguars.com did. Number eight on the list. Well-earned. Maybe slighted a little bit. Could I even thought be he should have been higher. I thought he should have been higher. I'll Appreciate run your God. campaign for you next time. <laughs> Get you a little bit higher. There we go. There we go. I got a question to ask real quick because I always wanted to ask you this. Most defensive backs end up as a defensive back because they don't have ball skills. You, from the day you walked in here, had some of the best ball skills I've ever seen out of a defensive back. What happened at wide receiver? <laughs> I had a defensive back head coach in college, um, and he played in the NFL as well, Alvin Wyatt. So he understood how important it was to catch the ball back there. 
And my freshman year, he told me if I caught every ball that was that hit, touched my hands, that I'll lead the I'll lead the um, NCAA, in which I end up doing. Uh, he was He's pretty a smart, smart man, man. and was, that was a was. good choice, and you did it well for a long time. The NFL, especially in a Jaguars uniform, and I can't wait to talk to you about the Tyreek Hill Jalen Ramsey matchup in just a little bit. Uh, give us an update, by the way. How's the family? What are you up to? How's the golf game? Because everybody, you're like Scobie now. Everybody asks you about the golf game. <laughs> golf game is great. Always keep it fine-tuned. Um, family is awesome. Kiddos are getting big. Um, coaching baseball. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm loving being a dad. Did so you know that, Jeff, that his first love was baseball? Uh, yeah, baseball. So was mine. <laughs> we, we share that we in go. common. Great athletes. Quick Great question. Athletes. Absolutely. Thank you for the compliment. And I, right back at you. The better golfer, you or Scobie? I'll, I'll go with myself. Very good. We might have to I get have a little turn. I like we it. might have I to like have it. a little match set up. Hey, let's take a look at our big three going into this week. And this is kind of easy. Well, might, you might need like a big ten in terms of players. Brought to you by Baptist Health. And, well, how about Patrick Mahomes, man? This guy has been incredible. MVP, 50 touchdowns a year ago. Well, 50 touchdowns. And to think about that, that's only happened twice in the National Football League history. And it was done by a guy, last name is Manning. Another one's last name is Brady. Okay, and this guy, Patrick Mahomes, did it in the second season, first year as a starter. Great company. He's in great company and amazing talent. Um, you, you couldn't build a better quarterback. Um, feet, arm, arm strength, like everything. Vision, it's, it's amazing. You played against Aaron Rodgers a bit. Has some of that kind of magic? Yes, it definitely has some of that type of magic. Um, just, just a little more mobile than, than Aaron. Um, but able to make any type of throw from any type of angle any, anywhere on the field, which, is, which keeps the defense on their toes. Any hand, too. <laughs> well, he can you know, extend the play, and I think what Rasheen said right there, the way he can throw it any way that he needs to. And that's very, very special, unique talent. Jaguars are comfortable with their quarterback as well. Nick Foles, Baptist Health Big Three, number two. How much of a difference maker is this guy going to be in 2019? Well, I think he's going to make a tremendous difference just from a leadership standpoint, Rasheen. The one thing that I kind of sit there and I'm worried about a little bit, he's on the injury report with an oblique. And an oblique muscle, you know, play, we played baseball. We were really good at baseball, right? Oh, yes. That's that torque motion. Brent, you were a baseball player. Quarterbacks have to have an oblique muscle to throw the football. Is that going to be a concern? It, it could be. I think the offensive line has to acknowledge that and do a great job of protecting him. Keep, keep him upright. Um, and keep him on his back, keep him looking downfield, and I think it'll be very important in this game. Baptist Health Big Three, number three is really number 27, Leonard Fournette. This could be the factor of the year. It could really help Foles, help the offense. He looked prime, Jeff, for a big season. Well, I want to see, first of all, his preseason was outstanding. His attitude was great. I want to see him get back to being even better than he was his rookie season, where he had a little bit over 1,000 yards and 3.9 yards of carry. He needs to be somewhere in that 4.5 yards of carry to be the effective back they need. Totally agree, and I have something personal with him. He's rocking my number, so um, <laughs> I was a huge fan of his his rookie year, um, so he needs to get back to form, so I'm, I, I can't wait to see him shine. He's a special talent as well. That's a great acknowledgement. That slipped right by me, but uh, we caught up with Leonard Fournette. He feels like it's going to be a big year. Take a listen. There's a lot of things that I did that to me wasn't big, but other people noticed it was kind of big, big for them. You're not superstitious, I guess, because if I ran for like a buck thirty and two touchdowns, I'd want the same cleats the next. Day. No, no, I'm not, not at all. And more of my interview with Leonard Fournette, and more on the Jaguars 2019 special coming up tomorrow night on CBS 47, eight o'clock. It's an hour long. Jalen Ramsey, AJ Boye, like you've never seen him before, and the new Leonard Fournette. Just some of the stories tomorrow night. All right, Jalen Ramsey, I mentioned it. How fun is this going to be? Tyreek Hill against Jalen Ramsey. This offense against Jaguars defense. I can go on and on. I think, Rasheed, it might be one of the marquee matchups in the National Football League this week. Tyreek Hill is more than a return specialist. Let me correct <laughs> Jalen from his comments last year. He's a great, great weapon, great speed, and he changes the game. You said it. He's a weapon. He's a, he's a weapon in every facet of the word. Um, and, but as a, as a competitor, as a corner, this is what Jalen lives for. Like, and this, is, this, is, this is what we, we're, we're, we've been breeded for. 
Um, the matchups that I can think of back when it was Peyton and Marvin and, and when I was with Aaron and Nelson, like Brady and Moss. Like it's a lot of combinations that you can get to that you mark these dates on your calendar and you have to be ready for it and, and Jalen will be ready. What makes Jalen so special in your eyes, a guy that's lived the position, played against guys you just mentioned? Competitor. He's the ultimate competitor. Um, when, when the lights are on, he's going to shine. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a change this year in the matchup because last year Jalen was a little, I don't want to say hesitant, but didn't get as good of a jam at the line of scrimmage. And they say that he's going to travel. If he travels against Tyreek Hill, I expect Jalen to be up in his face and there will be times that Tyreek will not get off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think it's a little humility. He, he needed a little bit of it last year and, um, and recognized that the guys across from him get ready. They play football, too, and they get paid to play. So I, I, love to, um, I can't wait to see what he does this year. I can't wait. Everybody can't wait for it. We'll see it on Sunday, 1 o'clock on CBS 47, Jags and Chiefs. Coming up next, Jeff takes us to the film room. Can't wait to see how Josh Allen changes the defense of the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is already pretty darn good. That's coming up next. Live from Mellow Mushroom, it's Jaguars All Access. We got a football game on Sunday. It counts the season opener against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is Jaguars All Access, brought to you by Fields Auto Group. Step up to luxury at FieldsAuto.com. It's definitely fun, you know what I mean, because it's creative. Um, I'm kind of OCD when I'm making them, so I want to get the wick right in the middle. I, I like particular colors. I want it to smell a certain way, look a certain way. So it's really been just kind of keeping me going these kind of past couple weeks, just kind of keeping myself busy in the off season. Miles Jack, the candle maker, and now a rich man after that contract extension. More of that in the trenches on Jaguars.com and on the Jaguars YouTube channel. Interesting note about Miles Jack. First of all, congratulations to him. He got a great contract. Yeah. 
He has not missed a practice or a game in his career, and with the injury concerns coming out of draft time, amazing. pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty cool story. Welcome back to Jaguars All Access, presented by Fields Auto Group. Brent Morton, no Jeff Lagerman, and everyone excited about a player on defense that we haven't seen play a regular season snap, rookie Josh Allen. Well, and you, you should be excited about a first-round draft pick because Josh Allen is a tremendous talent. And very intriguing what the Jaguars showed defensively against the Miami Dolphins. Let's jump into the lab and see what I'm talking about. He drops to throw. Looking to his right, fires it out to the right side, and that is incomplete and really good coverage. Nice work again by that Jaguar defense. Or great pressure there by the rookie Josh Allen. Welcome to the classroom of football 101, where in this case it might be a little bit more advanced, but the Jaguars against the Miami Dolphins showed a little bit of a 3-4 defensive look. Now, this is a typical 4-3 defense that the Jaguars run. Leon Jacobs being your outside linebacker, Miles Jack at the inside, of course, your guys up front with Campbell, Avery Jones, Marcel Darius, and Ngakwe. Well, when you go to a 3-4 that they showed against the Miami Dolphins, you're getting your best players on the field. So, and no offense to Leon Jacobs, but we're going to take him out. Okay, and we're going to take Ngakwe, who is this defensive end, we're going to put him over here as the Sam linebacker or an outside linebacker in a 3-4. Now we're putting in this young, exciting player in Josh Allen who has shown so much. And now we've got a 4-3 look, but now we've got to line up like a 3-4, okay? The 3-4 look. Clay Campbell stays right where he is. Avery Jones just moves over to where he's head up on the center. Over here, Marcel Darius just kicks it out a little bit instead of on the outside shoulder of the guard to the inside shoulder of the tackle. Now we have our 3-4 defense. And 3-4 defenses give you the ability to have multiple looks. And first and foremost, you can have the opponent prepare for a 4-3 and a 3-4, and that's incredibly difficult and time-consuming. But now to this 3-4 look, what can you do out of a 3-4 look? We've seen it with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can bring a safety, you can bring a corner, you can bring whoever you want. And these two guys on the outside, and then Gakwe and Josh Allen, are athletic enough to play in pass coverage. So now you become multiple. Which direction are they going to come from? Who's blitzing? An offensive coordinator's losing his mind because now you have your best players on the field to come after what? This guy right here, the quarterback. And that's what it's all about, getting the quarterback down on the ground. So for the Jaguars, putting this new little wrinkle into the playbook is twofold. One, it forces the opponent to prepare for multiple packages, number one. Number two, you're getting your best players on the field, and guess what? Now it's going to be havoc. All right, let's jump into the Miami Dolphins game and take a look at that in motion. All right, here's the 3-4 defense, and there's Josh Allen lined up on the outside, and this is what you kind of have happen sometimes with a 3-4. You can see the Miami Dolphins don't even account for Josh Allen coming off of the outside edge. Why? Why? It's a new defense, and as a linebacker, Josh Allen is unaccounted for. That's the beauty of this defense. Confusion, pressure, forced incompletion, successful play out of the 3-4. I'm sure that the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, has spent countless hours wondering what are they going to have besides what he showed, what they showed against the Miami Dolphins in the preseason game. We've seen a lot of top ten picks. I'm not sure people have been this excited about one in a long time. I, I said this before. He, he is, I think, going to break the rookie sack record, in my opinion. Great young player in Josh Allen. All right. Be fun to watch. Well, this guy at one time was a great young player. Ah, now he's hung him up. But we go back in the day with Rasheen Mathis as he continues to join us on Jaguars All Access, presented by Fields Auto Group. From Mellow Mushroom here in Avondale. Hey, you're on TV. Say hey.
This is Jaguars All Access, brought to you by Fields Auto Group. Step up to luxury at FieldsAuto.com. Oh, football fans have been waiting for this day for a long time. We have real football tonight, Chicago Green Bay. We have real football in Jacksonville on Sunday. Jaguars and Chiefs, 1 o'clock on CBS 47. Welcome back, Jaguars All Access, presented by Fields Auto Group. Brent Mortno and Jeff Lagerman. And we have Ashlyn Sullivan in the back with Rasheen Mathis to get a little bit more in depth conversation with the former Jaguar great. Should have been like six, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, we're going down memory lane here. I actually have your high school yearbook here in hand, 1995, Jaguars inaugural season. You're a freshman in high school. What do you remember from that year? Um, I remember working concession stands at the Jaguars game. Um, never really got to get inside the bowl in high school, so I was on the outskirts, but it was very exciting. This year, 25th season, being celebrated all year long. What kind of memories do you have, and what has this year been like so far? Um, tons of memories, too many to, to count. Um, but it's, it was an amazing ride, amazing ride, and the memories are still building within the community, so that's even a better thing. Um, so it's very exciting, I'm very, very excited to be a part of the, the 25th um, year of the Jaguars, and, and just ecstatic that I'm part of the history as well. So I couldn't help but flip through this yearbook, and I saw. A buzz cut for Sheen Mathis during his high school days. When did you grow the hair out? I didn't grow my hair out until after my sophomore year in college. Um, so I, I, I rocked the buzz cut all my life until I was 20 years old, pretty much. So, um, yeah, the hair is part of me now, and most people wouldn't recognize me without it. <laughs> and finally, you told me you played multiple sports in high school, and baseball being one of them. Yes, baseball was my first love. Um, still is, actually. I light up like a kid when when um, there's a ball or a bat in my hands, and now I'm living vicariously through my son, who's um, coaching this baseball team at Jack's Beach now. Can't blame you. Yeah. Guys, pretty athletic guy. Yeah, absolutely. Inglewood had some fantastic baseball players back in the day. And, and watch out for Ashland now. That's some investigative reporting once she gets after the yearbook. <laughs> I want to see the buzz cut. <laughs> hey, when we come up, we've got some headlines to get you ready for Sunday's game next on Jaguars All Access.
Let's give you the Gatorade headlines. Of course, Miles Jack, we talked about the extension, so he's playing happy, that's for sure, when the season starts on Sunday. Hey, uh, how about... Big John Henderson, a little do ball on Sunday, and Puzz will be a team captain on Sunday Two in the opener. Two great players. Absolutely. Great players. And tonight, it's Chicago. It's Green Bay. We'll talk about that game in just a moment. But first, we got to show the buzz cut. There he is, back in the Inglewood days. Number seven, Rasheen Mathis. I love it. Yeah, that, that looks good now. It even got a seven, so, you know, when you got to be a Jaguar, you added a two, right? There we go, there we go, there What's we go. What's the story with seven? Uh, my, my older brother, um, Jerry, he was number seven, so I pick it back off of him, and, and I grabbed the number as well. Now the Jacksonville Giants head coach and yes. winner, wins championships left and right. Exactly, exactly. He's, he's still got game, of course. All right, Chicago Green Bay, this is a division you were in for a little bit. What do you think about tonight? I'm, I'm excited to see it. There's been a lot of talk about Aaron, um, and I know Chicago is looking good as well. So um, being that I left a few years ago out of that division, I'm, 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 I'm going to be watching. It's a little different, too, that typically the Super Bowl champion comes yeah. back and plays on Thursday night. This game has significance. I believe it's like the 200th meeting or whatever it is uh, between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears, which is one of the most storied traditions in the National Football League's history. Absolutely. 100th season for the NFL, of course, and it kicks off in Jacksonville on Sunday at 1 o'clock. Hey, great to catch up with you. Love Thanks seeing you back talking me. Jags. Come on the show anytime. Rasheen Mathis. For Jeff Lagerman, I'm Brent Martineau, Ashlyn Sullivan. Check out Jaguars.com for all your coverage leading up to game time. And, of course, right on CBS 47 and Fox 30. We'll have you covered all weekend, including on game day. Starts with countdown to kickoff and then a 1 o'clock kick. Say hello, Mellow Mushroom. Hope the pizza was good tonight. And we'll see you back here next Thursday night with Calais Campbell after a big win, hopefully. Thanks for joining us.